Uh, can I just get into where we stand at this point? Uh, a large caseload here in the UK, and if we talk about uh, this time of year, we've had a lot of people typically embark upon more social activity, although some have tried to curtail it with Omicron and just how transmissible it's been. Now we're heading into uh, a couple of weeks where schools will be reopening. What do you make of the threat and whether we're going to have to weather some higher numbers in coming weeks? Well, I think it's clear that this coronavirus, like four other coronaviruses, will be an endemic virus in humans, and eventually it will likely cause the common cold. That's because as the immunity within the population increases, and already it's uh, the antibody levels in the United Kingdom are over 90 percent, once that occurs, then the virus is modified. It isn't prevented from reinfecting or from infecting people who have been vaccinated, but it is being prevented from causing serious illness. And that's why watching hospital admissions is extremely important. So, Professor, as you take stock of what we are seeing at this point in the UK with vaccines being delivered, uh, many up to their, their third booster shot at this stage, is it right that we keep the economy running at this point, uh, schools open and uh, no fresh restrictions at this stage? Well, there needs to be a time when countries begin to live with this virus in the best way they can. And many countries are trying different strategies. The UK strategy has been one of shifting risk assessment from the government, which has decided on various, at various times for lockdowns, to people. For example, when people go out now in social events, they have the possibility to self-test with a test provided through the NHS, and they can see whether or not they're infect, infected and therefore are a risk, a risk to people they might be visiting. So the UK is already living with the virus, and they're trying a new strategy to see if they can continue to limit the number of hospital admissions and deaths with the strategy that they've adopted. Remember, cases reported are really a mixed bag. It includes screening tests that go on in schools, in public places, as well as tests that go on to diagnose people with sickness. So it's really not a good indicator of what's going on. The best indicator is hospital admissions. Professor Heyman, I'm fascinated to hear your thoughts about this uh, immunity um, part of the, the equation. Is Omicron, which, again, appears to be very mild, I know so many people who have COVID at the moment have had it, and, and again, none of them have had severe symptoms as well, thankfully. But is Omicron giving us protection against worst variants to come, or actually is that a forlorn hope? Well, you know, we're seeing Omicron enter the United Kingdom to a population which has already had experience with this virus. And so what we're seeing is that the virus is modified in the way it infects humans. It causes less serious illness because people have immunity already. Whether or not this is a characteristic of the virus itself or of the fact that there's a population immunity is not really clear at present. But that will become clear as people who have neither been vaccinated nor have had illness become sick, it will then be determined whether or not this is actually causing less serious disease in itself or it's causing less serious illness because of the base of immunity within the population.